Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with my thoughts on the Mono Righteous Fire character. So I have played it now for a little bit longer than the previous videos. I've gotten to, you know, a little bit higher level and I have invested a lot more currency into the build. Now, before I get started, I want to go ahead and kind of talk about like my intermediate, you know, thoughts on the build. I'm not like a god tier mono stacker, right? I'm kind of just a guy who really likes to play Righteous Fire and wanted to check out the newest archetype. So, um, first off to get started, I will say the initial investment for this build for it to start feeling good is honestly going to cost you like probably a bare minimum of like 10 to 20 divines. When I say 10 to 20, it means like if you're extremely good at the game and you know everything I'm saying, you could probably get it on like probably six to eight divines. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's 20 divines for you. The purpose of this and the meaning for this is there's a lot of pieces that kind of go together that are very important to scale and you cannot half-ass them. So what does that mean? Well, step one, to get enough sustain to get the build going is already a very big investment. There are a lot of ways to do this, and I will kind of talk about my sources of regeneration now. So step one, we're gonna kind of walk through a little bit. I have like Sanctity for like 1% regen, right? Going up a little bit further, um, I have a uh, Watcher, not a Watcher's Eye, sorry, a, um, what is it called? Impossible Escape that I bought. That puts me at Prismatic Skin and Brink of Death. Without this, currently I can't even sustain. This is 4% regen on low life, and this is 2 max Ellie Res. Now, if you don't have this, you could use like a Shav's Revelation, but that's like a budget version that kind of fucks over your single target, sort of. It's still complicated, so that's like one option you can use. Another thing is I have the permanent Coruscating Elixir, which I know a lot of people are not interested in. The reasoning for the permanent Coruscating Elixir is this is technically like even more budget. All you have to do is get a Brutal Restraint with uh, Balbala and then have it on Trader. It doesn't even have to be here. You could put your Brutal Restraint over here, for example. You could put it over here to turn Mind Over Matter. It's just this is the spot where I found a really good one. I'm aware that like this is the Iron Will Keystone, but Iron Will does not really make too much of a difference when you are stacking mana with your Indigon, right? So even if I just, if I look at my regen right now, I'm 1,600 per second. If I turn on my RF, I'm actually degening. So, and that's mainly because my fire res is not capped, right? If I turn on my core skating elixir, I barely sustain, um, and that's sitting at 83 max fire res. Now, to be fair, there is a really big part where you can actually get maximum fire res on your boots along with life regen per endurance charge. So that is something that I could also get. I was just trying to squeeze more damage, which is why I currently have Scorch Ground. Now, some, other, uh, some of the other forms of regeneration, we type them in here, unfortunately, you don't actually get a crazy amount with Hierophant, right? A lot of this regeneration comes from the Inquisitor on the standard Righteous Fire build. So here, we also have, for example, 2% regen on Energy Shield Mastery. We have less damage taken over time on this one over here by Acrimony. And then, of course, you are going to need Zealot's Oath to convert all of this over. One of the other things you can do to help yourself out is get the 3% regen on a Flask Effect. You can get this from killing Katarina or in Tradely, you can buy it off people. You know, it is gated behind the unveil, so you don't get this every single time. And then the last big thing, and this is not for regeneration, since that is pretty much majority of it that I covered for regeneration. I do have the Ivory Tower, which is 2% regen. You don't need Ivory Tower for the build, but it is actually not that expensive of a body armor. And at the moment is kind of equivalent to what, like a, close to like a 700 plus ES chest for me while having Int and Mana. You can do that math by looking at my life that's currently reserved. So now to talk about this and put things more in perspective. If you look at my gear and you say that's too expensive, I don't want to buy that. I need to put more stuff into perspective for you guys. So I'm currently using a Watcher's Eye, which is located right here. That's giving me mana as clarity or mana, extra mana as energy shield from clarity. If I take out this Watcher's Eye and then I come over here to my passive or my uh, charm tree, I bought a lot of these charms here for only like 10 chaos. Uh, they're as follows, or mana as energy shield with minus exposure. So if I take all of these charms out, I am now down close to, what is that, like 4,000 plus energy shield. So that is a big hit to the energy shield, and that is a very important for your survivability, right? Now maybe we don't need these charms, maybe there are other charms to get, but these are definitely one of the good ones to get started at least, right? So... With that being said, I want to talk about the other pieces of gear I'm kind of using. So over here again, we talked about the Brutal Restraint. This right here is another big thing to talk about. So currently, 
uh, with my build, um, I kind of needed the 2% reservation efficiency. The reasoning for this reservation efficiency is without it, and I don't think I need it right now, I was unable to run the 50% uh, auras I needed on my Prism Guardian, and I had to anoint uh, Champion of the Cause with that jewel so that I could fit all the auras in. Right now, I have changed that strategy a little bit, and I'm currently using Discipline, uh, Purity of Fire, Malevolence. So this means I'm running two 35s and a 50%. This is what allowed me to pivot off of that. So I could actually technically replace this jewel, but I was actually not even res capped even with my setup. So I did need the jewel at the time. I've modified a few things. So another big thing, you get very starved with this build, right? So going a little further, I haven't been able to set up a cluster jewel yet because we don't even want to talk about the price of split personalities. Those are extremely expensive as well. I don't know if it's worth going with budget split personalities. So again, we're not going to cover that. <laughs> Just so much to kind of keep up with. Uh, over here, the impossible escape we talked about. Over here, I set up a healthy mind. Now, there is also an opportunity to set up the healthy mind down here, but the purpose of the healthy mind is for the mana scaling. Remember, mana is a very, very, very important part with this build because it governs your base damage, and on top of the base damage, <clears throat> it also is important for your indigon. Now, let's go talk about some other pieces of gear that are kind of required to set this up. I'm using Prism Guardian, as I said. The all res is pretty nice on it because we're res starved and it allows you to easily set up either a <clears throat> two 50% gems and a 35 or two uh, 35% and a 50, which is like a lot easier, right? Uh, boots are kind of up to you. You could run like Legacy of Fury if you chose to. I decided to go with some fractured int boots and just craft for mana. So these are not really very expensive. Cyclopean Coil is a very good budget belt you can use for the build. The purpose of it being budget is crafting a all attributes so it'd be percent all attributes with intelligence belt all attributes kind of rolls on the um, elder belt base can be a lot of currency at the beginning and the cyclopean coil provides shock immunity which is actually very nice for this build because we don't have a crazy amount of mitigation my gloves i was originally using shaper's touch i did not really enjoy shaper's touch these gloves give me more intelligence or sorry more energy shield the purpose of shaper's touch is kind of scaling your strength and also it gives you a ton of evasion. So I can't show you Shaper Stutch now, but they basically give you evasion based off your intelligence. They give a percent. That scales very good with grace, but I noticed that I wasn't necessarily dying to attacks. I was dying to other forms, so I just dropped the grace entirely. The grace allowed me to drop, uh, you know, this setup here with the reservation, which I then ended up going to champion the cause. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not really running grace. It's a little bit more expensive, so I'm just happy with this setup. My weapon, I'm going with essentially a dot multi intelligence weapon with mana. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but that's a good weapon to get started. This one has cast speed, which helps me with my flammability and scorching ray, which we'll talk about as well. And then my rings. So the rings over here, I went with intelligence fractures. I think they were like 40 chaos a pop, probably a lot more expensive. Now I decided to craft them with an essence of horror for damage over time multiplier. This one I hit mana regen. This one just has strength. I then proceeded to craft mana on them. The reasoning for dot multi is you need to remember that with a build like this, there are three big components. Base damage, increase, multipliers. So we can also add minus res in there. That's kind of like a multiplier in a different way. You get your base damage from your MP pool. This previously was something like plus level of fire gems. Right now with this character, it is essentially your mana pool. You get loads of increases from your Indigon up to 2,000, right? So you don't really need to worry about spell damage increases. The next one to talk about is the Dot Multi. Dot Multi, right, is multiplicative. So this is why you want to scale sources of damage over time multiplier that can be a little bit more difficult to get. For example, I have like Breath of Flame up here. I haven't even gotten to pick up because I completely forgot. This is like another big source of Fire Multi. Anyway, though, moving on. Um, I think the amulet, I don't remember if, the, if I talked about the amulet. Amulet, I got fractured chaos res and was rolling with intelligence um, essences. I got really lucky and hit like mana with maximum energy shield. And then I decided to go with primal spirit. Primal spirit is a very nice budget annoy. The primary reason for primal spirit is I kept switching my amulet like 14 times and I kept spending a golden oil every time I had to respec it because I kept going to uh, champion of the cause. So for now, primal spirit is very budget. So I'm pretty happy with that setup. As for the gems, nothing here is too expensive to my knowledge. I've got the Eternal Blessing with Determination Arcane Cloak. You can kind of choose what aura you want to uh, set up there. Cloak is on left click. On my gloves, I have Flammability, Clarity, 
Now, Clarity is with Arrogance, specifically for the Watcher's Eye. If you don't have a Watcher's Eye, that's two free gem sockets. Uh, and then Hexbloom. Hexbloom is very good because it spreads the curse. Now, over on the boots, I have Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, Frost Blink, Archmage. This is because I now dump my MP pool with Archmage, which makes it feel much better. Uh, in the body armor, we have Arcane Surge, Control Destruction, Righteous Fire, Swift Affliction, Elemental Focus, and Burning Damage. Remember, you do need the Arcane Devotion Righteous Fire here. It will not work with a regular RF. Um, if you want to run Awaken in KOE, you can either drop Swift Affliction or B. What you can try to do is drop maybe the... Um, uh, where is it? You can drop Arcane Surge, and then you can replace with Affliction entirely. Depends on how much decks you need in your setup. In the Helmet at Indigon, we have Castwall Channeling, Armageddon brand of Voltality. I think it's important to use this one because of the uh, instant brand, um, the basically the brand expiration. Uh, Infuse Channeling and Cyclone. Now, if you want more damage, you can remove Cyclone and replace it with Scorching Ray. This will trigger fire um, infused channeling. Cyclone is triggering physical. So you do more physical damage and take less physical damage, which is what I'm weak to. With Scorching Ray, you have a bigger exposure. You get fire infusion, which is more righteous fire damage. So the reasoning for this right now is because the maps I was running are pretty rippy and Cyclone kind of allows me to maneuver around a little bit, right? So a common question people always ask about is mind over matter. Remember that mind over matter does not work with your energy shield because for it to protect your mana pool, your energy shield pool has to be deplete, uh, depleted, right? Or to protect your life pool. So when my ES goes to zero, then it would protect against the 27 life, which will not really work, right? The reasoning the mana pool is completely unreserved is number one, you get a big bonus for Hierophant 50% or sorry, 100% AOE. You can see that located right here on Sanctuary. Number two, Indigon. The more mana we dump and the more we can continue to dump, the more the tooltip damage skyrockets the build. So prime example, if you look at my RF here, it says it does 300k. Now it says it does 846k. Now it's doing, okay, well, I just lost the stack there, so you can't see, but you get the point. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump into a map really fast. So I'm going to skip Wildwood for right now because it's kind of rippy for my character. So we're just going to be doing um, like a standard T16 here. Okay. So hit your flask and you pretty much just shield charge, right? That's that's pretty much about it. If you encounter some really tanky rares, what you go ahead and do is you can hit your uh, infused channeling um, with your cyclone. So that's pretty much where that would kind of come in. Also, this AOE that I have on my character is zero AOE on the tree. All the AOE comes just from the Hierophant Ascendancy. I will say that you have to pay attention to the Reduce Flash Charges mod. I haven't personally run it, but I know that with my Wandering Path Atlas, it would really screw it up. You also have to pay attention to uh, Elemental Reflect. It doesn't matter if your Frost Blink is level 1, um, because your Arcane Cloak gives your Frost Blink so much damage, you will Frost Blink yourself right to Standard League. Hey, fortunate. Nice. So here's an example where you can kind of cyclone around, maneuver out of a few hits, so you don't feel like you're stuck a little bit. Remember that when you are cycloning, you are triggering the brands, and I will talk about this brand setup here uh, in a little bit. I did not create this at all. I believe my chat got the info from the guy one mana left, but I'm not really sure where it originates, right? No idea. I really wanted to use Scorching Ray, but being locked in place and not having the best defensive layers kind of just feels a little bit bad right now. Oh, hey, look, there's a nice sale going on. Don't mind me, guys, just a quick wholesome sale real fast. A moment from our sponsor. 
Don't forget, even you can trade and earn currency in Path of Exile. All you have to do is download Awakened PoE Trade. Okay, so we are, we are back into our map now. Oh yeah, flasks. Big, big thing that's gotten me killed. When you teleport out for a sale and you come right back in, make sure you hit your flasks. Otherwise, uh, some bad stuff might happen. So to show the damage, if I can ramp here, let's see here. The guy's probably going to be too squishy to actually ramp. Can I get another one? That's like 1.7 mil, but no, he died. So if you saw my MP bouncing up and down there, right? A lot of the reason why it bounces up and down there is because of this mastery right here. I haven't found a better way to kind of circumvent this yet, but this is currently what we're using. But basically, it doesn't really matter to my knowledge, like which way you go here. You want to recover 10% of mana when a brand expires while attached. I'm going to try dropping this and maybe seeing if there's like a better one I can use, like maybe a 10% chance to recover. Actually, no, there's no way that, that would, I don't think the mana mastery there would really matter. Uh, but yeah, this is currently the best method for me to ramp for like single target. Uh, you don't need it against a lot of stuff, but the thing is, once you are using, um, once you are doing like Wildwood Delirium tier 16 league mechanic, the mobs get really tanky. Like they put bosses to absolute shame. So for scenarios like that, that is where the mana really comes in. I originally, I was trying out mana recoup and I did not really like it. Mana recoup just felt inconsistent. I could try doing it again, but I don't really think that it's going to fix the scenario I was in because if I'm taking, you know, thousands upon thousands of damage at the moment, I don't really think I can survive that. Maybe you never, never really know, right? I, I got to test it more to see. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope that the video helped you guys out. You know, if you like the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. Hope to see you guys all in Rayclast.